Fala galera, vocês estão no canal Rodrigo Baltar, sejam todos muito bem-vindos. Pessoal, acabou de sair aqui uma gameplay do modo No Return, o modo roguelike do novo The Last of Us Part 2 Remaster, que vai ser aí a versão definitiva do PlayStation 5 e acredito eu que é a versão que vai vir para o PC aí mais na frente. Então a gente vai dar uma olhada nessa gameplay aqui explicando um pouco do jogo, vamos ver se mudou alguma coisa. Eu peço que você dê o like, é claro, se inscreva no canal que é muito importante, vire membro caso você goste do conteúdo. E vamos lá, dar uma olhada e é claro, torcer para que seja um modo maneiro. É um modo que, claro, se eu comprar o jogo eu vou querer experimentar, porque a campanha eu já zerei, até gostaria de zerar um pouco a campanha de novo, né? Mas não sei para quando vai ficar. Agora esse modo aqui que veio aí como para tapar o buraco do multiplayer, né? É, é um modo que eu vou tentar experimentar, né? Você vai, pelo que eu entendi, você vai combando até você morrer. Aí, quando você morrer, zera tudo e você comba de novo. Acho que é isso. Então, sem mais delongas, vamos lá. Bom, vamos lá então, pessoal. On the 19th of January, and like a metal pipe reinforced with sellotape and scissors, it has grown even more powerful, packing technological improvements. Saiu esse vídeo aqui no site do PlayStation, saiu um outro no The Informer. Mode, no return, that has us most intrigued. In this roguelike survival gauntlet, which you're watching throughout this video, your mastery of Naughty Dog's stealth and combat is pushed like never before. We got to quiz Matthew Gallant, game director on The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Eu não lembro se tinha aquela arma ali, né? Não tenho certeza se tinha aquela metralhadora. Não lembro. Deve ter, né? Tem muito tempo que eu joguei o 2. Through a series of encounters that are randomly generated from maps and enemies and rule modifiers. So you'll fight through a series of encounters that end in a boss fight. And as you're fighting those encounters, if you die, Melocoton. your progression is reset and you will start a new run that has been randomly regenerated. Random combinations of maps and rules. And cara, and stuff essa like parte aqui é, da, é, é o do original, né, cara? <risos> Porra, igualzinho, cara. Mesma merda. As Dina, as Lev, as Joel, as Tommy. Dá pra jogar com o Ricardo O'Hara e com o Lev. And they all have different traits. Vai ser o primeiro personagem trans controlável na história dos games, né? Eu acho. Lever. Aí, ele aí, ó. Mods and new characters, new skins. And I think this is going to be a mode that players who love The Last of Us Combat, they're going to find that there's Stuff in here that surprises them. É, esse é um cenário. Ways that's going to push them to um cenário novo, né? Strategies and maybe playstyles that weren't ones that they tried in their main game playthrough. So, where does a mode like No Return come from? Matthew worked on the combat encounters in the original The Last of Us Part 2. Was there a sense back then that the combat system oh, could be pushed in a new direction? I would say, in general, we make our systems, our AI, our combat mechanics. To be just incredibly robust. Ah, essa parte aí é do, também da campanha original. But I think what the funny result of that is it's a system that's so robust that you can throw even more at it. You know, we really do have these enemies that can react very dynamically. Cara, sistema de tiro é, é absurdo, né? Cara? Skill upgrades and all this, and maybe there's more of them in the main story than the average player is going to get in one playthrough. So there was so much to draw from, and thinking about like how can we take these incredibly rich systems that we already have? Cara, eu quero ver remix them. qual vai ser a diferença. Desse remaster é de para versão 60 quadros do PS5 que já tem disponível. Vai ser difícil você encontrar alguma diferença, cara. Os caras não vão mudar nada na jogabilidade. Vai ser. Eu acredito que só a resolução ali e muito de chavada, né? Recontextualize them in a different way in this mode. And then on top of that, because this is an arcade mode, it's not canon, uh, there's no narrative connection, we gave ourselves some permission to do things that were not grounded in the strictest sense. That's usually something that's a real 
design pillar for The Last of Us is everything has to be grounded. The items have to be very realistic. Ah, isso aí eu acho que não tinha não, cara. This project, we got to do things like invisible enemies or pustules raining from the sky or, you know, having enemies in contexts and locations that don't make narrative sense for why those characters would be there. There are a couple of characters that have abilities that are not grounded. To give an example is Abby. Her default ability is she gets health back. Caralho, Abby é um touro, né? So that's just an ability that didn't exist in the original game because that's not grounded at all. There's no real world justification for why she would do that. So, so in that sense, those are new mechanics. But really, eu sempre pensei assim, pô, se a Abby dá um soco na boca do zumbi e o dente do zumbi corta a pele dela. Eu acho que ela vira zumbi, né? Então, narrativas rules no return won't break. Some encounters pair you up with AI allies, and you won't ever see heroes from Team Ellie working alongside those in Team Abby. So, one of the cool things about No Return is just how many playable heroes are included. We asked Matthew not just how they chose the lineup, but how they gave each character a playstyle that honors their role in the main campaign. Yeah, so we chose characters, you know, we wanted to have a split between Ellie and Abby in terms of their faction for better of doing Team Ellie, Team Abby. But we also looked really carefully at characters that we knew were fan favorites, you know, characters like Tommy, characters like Lev and Yara. We really wanted those. É, agora dá pra jogar, vai ter o Tommy também, né? We didn't want them to just be, we wanted to really connect them to a type of playstyle that not only is going to be fun for the player, it's going to be something really unique and different when they choose that character, but it also uh, resonates with their identity in the narrative. Uh, some of those were easy, you know, Lev uses a bow through the main story, very easy to make him the, the stealth character, but others we, we had to try different designs. Agora, é, é uma parada tão preguiçosa, na minha opinião, é tão preguiçoso isso aqui, porque poderia ter uma campanha do Lev, poderia ter a campanha do Tommy, né, porque o Tommy ele vai embora, lá sozinho, é, pegando os caras todos. Então tem, poderia ter a campanha do Tommy. Poderia ter a campanha do Leve até encontrar a Ab. Podia ter a campanha da japonesinha aqui, mostrando. Mas é só um modo de combagem. So what we do in No Return is that when you play as Yara, it's like play, picking a duo. You always have Lev as an AI companion. Through the entire run, every single fight you're gonna have Lev. Up. Ah, toda vez que você joga com a com a e e Yara, você tem o Lev de te seguindo, né? And Yara has skill upgrades that upgrade Lev's lethality, so that's really fun. The trade-off with her is that she only starts with a pistol, so you're more dependent on like getting good guns and equipment from your runs. But uh, I really like that dynamic uh, for her, and that's a really fun place. I really love playing as Yara. And just kind of across the board. It's definitely cool seeing how, say, Jesse's cautious scavenging stacks up against oh, his bow antics. Things are also drastically altered by random encounter mods. Is there a mod that Matthew dreads seeing on the encounter map? Two that I really love. I don't know if you've encountered this one yet, but we have a modifier, a, mo a mod that does invisible enemies. And those enemies, uh, they will become briefly visible on when they attack you, and you can see them in listen mode, and they actually still cast shadows in the flashlight so there are a bunch of ways to play around ah dá pra ver que um boneco é skin do outro né level and that really that will really jump scare you in a fun way another one that i really like is there's a modifier that makes enemies drop a bomb on death so that's one that just always keeps you on your toes and you have to think about like not only getting the kill but how to get out how to dodge out and you can strategize around it and try to you know make one enemy die and drop a bomb that'll set off a chain não lembro dessa arma cara and that, that's really, just really fun to play around on the flip side, is there a mod that always fills in with confidence? I really like the mod that you really get there, né? Eu não tô lembrando. During this run, when you craft, you get weapon parts. So when I see that one, I'm just grabbing everything I can, scavenging as many uh, items as I can, so that I can just craft a whole bunch in that run. And now I've loaded up on weapon parts, so when I get back to the hideout, I'm just kitting out all my guns. So I find that one, when that happens, if you can play strategically around it, you can really, really optimize it and, and really set yourself up really well with it. Esse bicho aí é pica, né? Estalador. And once you've got a feel for characters and mods, you can see how you stack up against fellow survivors in the daily run, which Matthew describes as the ultimate test of your no return prowess. So daily run is a feature that's very close to my heart. <laughs> Basically, it came about because. I was going to put the translation, but the translation is so gigantic that I don't know why. 
doing it based on a random seed. So because the game is built that way, that means that if you have two players playing the same random seed, they're going to get the same challenges. They're going to be offered the same opportunities. So that flowed very naturally to, well, why not have people compete? Why not have people trying to get the highest score given the same opportunity? Yeah, so, so, um, so, you know, in the in the roguelike space that we find very exciting, other games have done daily runs and uma parada para ser tipo uma competitivo, né? How you compare on? Para ver quem tem mais ponto, para ver quem com bom mais. Also, just knowing, you know, it's like permadeath plus plus. It's just like oh, if I mess up this run, if I stop paying attention and I get eaten by a clicker, that's me done for the whole day. I can't, I have to try again tomorrow. So it's like extra stakes onto the experience, and I think. I'm really excited to see what players do in terms of like the meta game of this. What strategies will they be using to maximize their score on the score table? I want players to really think about like risk and reward, especially in this mode where they're thinking, "Oh, do I go for the slightly harder encounter that has a higher score multiplier, or do I play it safe? I play the easier fight, but the score multiplier isn't as high, so I probably won't score as high." You know, I I, I love moments, uh, and I find this in my own playthrough where like my own greed sinks me where I go for some one of the gambits comes on or I try to do some really tricky maneuver and that's what ends up killing me and I'm just like, oh, I'm you know hoisted by my own petard kind of thing having to manage that risk and reward I think is a really exciting element do you think you've got what it takes to conquer the daily run based on our performance with this bloater here we think we're in trouble Thanks to Matthew for talking us through No Return, and you can try it for yourself. Bom, vamos dar uma olhada aqui. No. No outro modo. No outro modo não, no outro vídeo. Não poderia ter prestado mais atenção no que o cara estava falando aqui no, no gameplay. Tem alguém aqui? Deixa eu ver aqui. Acho que é esse aqui, Eurogamer, né? Que tem a gameplay. Vamos lá. Go. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered is on the way, bringing with it the graphical and technical upgrades you'd expect for a new PS5 release. Salvo engano, ele já vai sair, né, cara? Support. Alongside new lost levels and commentary, and new accessibility features, a new speedrun mode, and a new gameplay that includes new instruments. Não sei por que essa legenda tá gigante assim. Two remastered features of entirely new survival mode, no return to get stuck into. We were recently invited to Sony's London HQ to go hands-on with this new roguelike mode, capture our gameplay and chat to the game's director, Matthew Gallant, about its introduction to the game. Bom, o que eu ainda não consegui entender, talvez seja porque eu não prestei atenção. Naturally, our first remaster was why now? When the original game came out just three years ago, we asked Galant. From our perspective, this is very similar to. É, por exemplo, aqui não tinha, aqui não tinha. Aqui é em Jackson, né? Aqui não tinha nenhum uma gameplay de tiro e tal, né? Eu acho que vai ser uma parada mais arcade mesmo, para tu simplesmente combar, cara, né? É, do jeito que eu falei, ia ser muito... Tipo, ter uma campanha, tipo o modo mercenário, né, do, do Resident. Caraca, é da dá... soco até no instalador, filho. É complicado, galera. Complicado pra caralho, cara. Eu... Pô, se a gente queria uma historinha nova, né? Pô, qualquer porra, cara. Que viesse a história do Leve. Que viesse a história do urso lá pra tu pegar o outro cara, pra tu beijar o cara. Foda-se, cara. Só queria uma coisa menos idiota, né? Pô, tu ficar com um bano pra quando morrer voltar do início é... Poderia até ter, cara, esse modo merda aqui. Mas, pô, os caras poderiam dar também alguma coisa pra quem quer curtir uma historinha, né? Podia fazer uma campanha aí de 8 horas do, do Tommy. Ah, cara, é uma foda, né? You begin each run in a hideout, 
where you can't do much to begin with, save for select. Só combate deve vir aqui com ban, né, por esses lugares. Characters to choose from, Ellie and Abby, and two types of challenge to undertake in each encounter: hunted and assault. Every character has a distinct loadout and unique traits. Ellie, for example, starts a run with the recipe for Molotov cocktails and with two of her upgrade branches already unlocked. While Abby heals on melee kills and comes with a melee upgrade recipe. She's clearly much more geared towards up close and personal combat, which makes perfect sense. Caralho. É, eles estão mostrando a diferença do, dos personagens, né? Como é que ela, né? Como, por exemplo, a Ellie... A, a Abby é mais forte, né? A Ellie... Ela vem com a parada do Molotov. Né? A, a Yara tem a companhia do Leve. Eu queria ver o Tommy, né? Não aparece o Tommy aqui. Nenhum momento. Ah, pessoal. Então, ó, cara... Graficamente é a mesma merda. É... A jogabilidade é idêntica. Também. Ah, o, o Leve deve ser uma skin da... Da, da L. Do The Last 1. Remake. E os outros bonecos é um skin do outro, né? Todos eles se, se mexem igual. It's just quite fun to take the rock solid combat of the last of us part 2 and fit it with Todos eles já estejam parecidinhos. Surprisingly well. Players much 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 more familiar with the game and up finding it repetitive before more É isso aqui, cara, vai ser um vai ser uma parada que nego vai jogar pra caralho. Eu vou jogar direto isso aqui, vai ter speed run, o caralho. Para mim, para mim, eu vou, devo jogar uma vez ou outra assim e não vou conseguir tancar muito não. Já existe muita disputa na vida. Na vida, né, real. Tudo que eu quero, tudo que eu menos quero é ficar disputando com os outros na porra de um jogo de videogame. Então é isso aí, galera. É, eu vou ficar por aqui. É, tem mais aqui, até todo mundo tá explicando, né? Todo mundo com o mesmo vídeo, acredito eu. É, todo mundo... Todo mundo farmando, viu? Então é isso aí, cara. Fica por aqui. É nóis, um grande abraço. Deixem nos comentários o que vocês acharam. E é complicado, né, cara? Ainda vai ter que pagar pra jogar isso. Até a próxima.